Short basics. Imagine you want to be able to aim, shoot, reload and throw grenades with your torso, all together with being able to walk, run, crouch and slide with your legs. For a single state machine such a task has a nightmarish complexity, because not only you need to define 16 states to manage your game, you need to invent some non-intuitive mechanism to switch between them in a way next state teleports to the middle of the work, for your player to be able to start reloading in a slide, stand up and end reload in the running state. Modern big games can have tens and tens activities for both legs and torso, and the workload to create a thousand different states is unreasonably big. To combat this factor, smart people use two state machines that run in parallel, one manages legs and the other one manages torso. This way you trade multiplication of complexity for additive complexity, and for big numbers the workload difference is life-saving. This knowledge is like controllers 101, but if you step a single step further, you are entering the brain melting area. In practice, you will never run a system of two parallel state machines. In any game you will find a lot of multiplication exceptions, impossible state combinations. For example, in Ape Sex Legends you cannot run while using a healing kit, you can only walk and crouch, and that makes sense gameplay-wise. Simultaneously, there are torso actions that you cannot initiate from some lag states, for example, sprint practically blocks anything aside from jump and slide. While making players happier, this design shatters our world picture, our lag transition logic is dependent on what our torso is doing, and our torso transition logic is dependent on what state legs are in. Your system consists of two parallel codependent state machines, and this is a huge pain in the ass. There are tens of not so easy to answer questions you need to answer to get everything to work. How do I forbid certain state from the pool? What if both machines want to transition in one frame? What if both want to transition, but the goal combination is forbidden? What machine is main? Do they use one input? What machine updates player's velocity? What if machine A want to transition before machine B, but simultaneously wants to update character after machine B? What if that order is also state dependent? Yeah, I will only say this wasn't a cakewalk. So, the solution. We build a system of not two, but four state machines in an interesting configuration. From the top layer we see only two of them, they are called torso and legs. Torso machine consists of states called torso behaviors, leg state machine consists of states called legs behaviors. Torso state machine is the main one, and torso states are responsible for overall transition logic of your character. And here comes the first interesting detail. Torso states just have a fixed legs behavior attached to them. It is simply wired in edit via expert fields. For the easiest example we have a torso state called jog and it uses the legs behavior called jog legs. Jog legs behavior obviously is also a state machine. It consists of five states, idle, start, cycle and end animations for jogging and another state called walk stop that we invoke if player starts to jog but ends it abruptly in the first 0.5 seconds of our start animation. Also jogging animations are in fact sets of eight animations in a trench code, one per 45 degrees direction angle. Having legs behavior fixed per torso behavior allows for very straightforward transition control flow. First we ask current state behavior if it wants to transition, if positive we call previous behaviors on exit state, change behavior and call its internal on enter state method. And because we simply have a single legs behavior attached to our torso state machine, all we really need to do is to forcibly call legs state machine to switch into this defined state. And then we call the real on enter state method that is empty in the base and requires overriding in A. And now, prepare for some engineering beauty. The single most important know-how about state machine-based systems is that in-state update is never bugged. Things seriously break only on state transitions. If you want your system durable and bug-free, minimize the transitions amount and frequency. Simple as. Let's illustrate with some examples. Firstly, I obviously reuse legs behaviors between different torso states. For example, jog torso obviously has jogging legs base, but maybe I want to be able to use some consumer or gesture on the run. And here comes the first transition budget cut. In the Lex state machine, when we process the switch command from above, we do an idiot proof check to see if we don't switch into current state. And if so, we just ignore the call. Yep. If both torso behaviors use one Lex processor, we don't even bother. Let's eat some pills. For torso this is just a single static animation, and for legs it is our old known jog legs base. And obviously, as we already defined our jog logic once, all its glory can be accessed from pills eating state. I can start eating on the run and stop and start again, I can change directions, etc. 
Well, that's powerful, but we have another huge structural gem hidden here that also cuts transitions. Old viewers might find this structure familiar. I have a curse to not be watched video in AI series that describes this concept a little bit broader. Lex behavior states have the type called Lex actions, and Lex actions are instantiated once and live in a shared pool instead of being a copy per behavior. Firstly, this helps to combat pyramidization. Our state machines don't have any doubles in their states. I use walk, stop and idle in both jug locomotion cycle and in walk locomotion cycle. But the only doubled logic is literally this one line in behavior description telling me that I use idle state here. And second enormous thing is this little structure that works when we enter into a newly switched legs behavior. If it so happens that previous behavior used one of our states, we don't bother switching it and instead work directly from here, analyzing the next input. Schematically, we can draw a behavior like a set of actions, and if two behaviors intersect in one action, we switch behavior that owns it, but we don't do anything to that action, its internal processes do not interrupt, its animation continues to play, etc. It doesn't even know that behavior is changed on top. To illustrate, I have here two base locomotion behaviors, jog family and walk family. Of course, we can blend nicely from one cycle to another, but the hero of the day is an idle state. If character stands idle, I can transition into the different state, but you won't even notice it until I will move again. We don't even flinch. And this is a really big deal. Speaking from experience, most annoying transition bugs are born from small low-level corner case bullshit about animation transitioning. Sometimes your animation looks bad if transitions to itself. Sometimes it can't handle transition spam well. Sometimes there are unique blending caveats for certain poses. And our system has an impenetrable armor from this bullshit, because we simply don't do any transitions unless we absolutely need to. Another huge deal when designing a shared pool of actions is that you can define new behaviors from already building bricks without any unknown self-repeating. For example, we already have sprint, jog and tidal animations for our base locomotion. And then suddenly we got inspired by Dark Souls 3. Look at this spellcasting behavior. It wants to have an idle legs, but it doesn't force them. Instead, from moving state, it lets the character to move a little bit further with walking animation before the stop. Let's take it further. Imagine if we sprint, we sprint for a little bit, then jog, then jog stop and finally go into idle. And depending on the momentum we had entering this state, we can choose the stopping stage. Sadly, I don't have here any spellcasting animations, but let's demonstrate on this syringe animation. From sprint we gradually stop from sprinting, from jog we gradually stop from jogging, and from idle we stay idle all the way. If this was some epic spell, everyone would clap and praise how we have the best dynamic cast and animations in our PvP game. But look back for a second. I already have my sprint, jogs and idle pose actions defined. So all I really did to add this feature to my spellcasting is I created a new behavior that takes 40 lines to define, <laughs> and that's with my double line space for matching preference. This can be achieved because Lex behavior is just a piece of transition logic. All it does is it manages on what action updates our Lex currently and nothing more. Actions can contain a bunch of animation switching logic and more move our character around, but they are reusable as fuck. And that reusability is also a very big deal for update logic. Look, we have a Witcher-style targeting system in our game. It defines target and turns character towards it, but doesn't take control of the camera and doesn't override its forward direction. And magical things happen with our legs. We only need to teach them how to work with targeting once. For example, we have here combat engaged locomotion package as well, and it obviously knows how to be targeted. Then if I hold the defense button, the character lifts the shield, and this blocking action uses engaged walk as well. And simply because it does, from the get-go, our blocking behavior and any other behavior, to be honest, knows how to be target locked, without me lifting a finger. If your legs behavior knows how to move, all its torso clients automatically can do it. Finally, in Lex behaviors, one is not like others. This one is called torso double behavior and it consists of only one action that is called torso double action. This thing essentially does nothing and bounces any calls back to its torso behavior master. While the action doesn't have any static animation and again plays whatever the torso commands to play. While looking funny at first sight, this is a very important piece of a puzzle. It gives us an ability to just command our legs to play some simple animation while not 
ruining our system symmetry and not inventing a separate control flow for simpler side states, for example, attacks. Attack states are all different, but they all want to just play their own legs and move with root motion. And this is one of two blurred text pieces from earlier. Remember I told you that our legs behavior doesn't transition if it is already in the needed state? <laughs> well, torso double behavior is an exception to this rule, because it can so happen that one torso double state transitions into another one, for example, when two attacks are queued into a combo line. In such a case, we want to reconfigure our double animation for every new torso behavior, so these ones force transition. Now a short review of base classes. First, as you see, I refactor the main state machine. Torso states are no longer move class, they are called behaviors as well. I did this because my public controller project was demonstrating a simple game with one, one animation per player action, but in our case animation is no longer a characterizing trait of an action. For example, jogging is obviously a single entity when it comes to system design, but it has three animations and wants to have idle as well. And this is the case for most of our torso behaviors, even the goddamn shield lifting has start and end animations. Heavy attacks and channeled poses will probably have several substates, and we want to use a lot of them. So I made torso into behaviors as well. Now they hold external and internal transition logics, and in some cases some update logic as well. And torso actions are mostly the low level animation stuff. One final thing I want to mention, if you want to recreate such a system, do not be baited into over inheritance. Despite both machines are being built of behavior and action named classes, don't try to have another abstract behavior and action class beneath them. This is a total bait, they are similar in names and nature, but not because they are relatives, they just do similar thing of building two layer state machines. Leg stuff is very simple, behaviors have enter, exit and update method stops and can switch actions around. Action have enter, exit and update stops and this central method that requires an action to set up all necessary animation framework settings as it sees fit for itself to be represented properly. Animation framework work similar to this video of mine, but now we have two animation players for settings to be able to work on legs and torso in parallel. I will talk about animation framework more in the next video. Finally, if you watched carefully, you remember that I have shown you another blurred line at the very start. Look at this call to force lag system transition. If you watched through all this video, you now understand that this command is safe as fuck. It doesn't do any complex resets, it doesn't generate transitions at all if there is no need, it is absolutely fail safe and independent of torso's life cycle. It just takes the needed legs behavior as an argument. <laughs> now, if it is independent and fail safe, what stops us from calling it from inside torso update frames? Nothing. And if one torso behavior in fact can have access to several legs behavior, it is also logical to give such torso behaviors a mechanism to choose what legs behavior they use first, before they even process their own enter methods. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is how you create such complex behaviors like healing from Apex Legends. This one torso behavior can switch between walking and crouching, and those are obviously two different behaviors. For now I have only one thing to demonstrate this mechanism, it is this heavy attack. As a torso behavior it has three stages, charge up, hold position and attack release. Charging animation uses torso double and doesn't have any trackable frames, it just stands here and casts its animation. Charge hold animation has a different legs behavior, it transitions to combat walk legs. <laughs> we don't have stamina yet, so we can walk like this indefinitely, but for an actual game some stamina cost or maximum channeling time should be introduced, obviously. As I told previously, this stage automatically knows all the tricks that combat walk legs can do. And finally, when I let go of mouse, we switch to torso double legs behavior again and play this attack in animation, but this time it is a real attack with variable frames, ability to retarget direction for several frames, etc. And what is the deal with me showing you things by bits, blurring shit? 
Well, that's to ease out the journey and to build iterative understanding. As I mentioned, this is a devlog series. I am creating a game I hope to sell one day, so there won't be any code project. But if you wish to build your system in a similar way, or to refactor existing public controller project into it, here is your instruction. Don't abolish move from the start. First, make all your moves to have an export field to point at a single next behavior. Then create a new state machine for your legs. Create base classes and from 2 to 5 behaviors, including torso double. Make sure your systems work nicely with just legs, no matter what torso does. When you debug your legs machine, abolish move, refactor it into behavior and add support for torso actions switching around. Create some heavy attacks or something similar. Then, when all works smooth, make a final adjustment and allow your torso behaviors change legs behaviors on the fly. If you did everything right, it will just work. If not, debug your shit again, but, well, you will face much less despair comparing with an attempt to create everything from zero. Thanks for watching. See you.